Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be comparing the LumaFusion app with Final Cut Pro for iPad. Unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know that Apple finally dropped the iPad version of Final Cut Pro with a 30-day free trial. So what's the difference between Final Cut for iPad and LumaFusion? To be honest, they're kind of similar, but there are some benefits and drawbacks to each. So I'm gonna run through those today so you can kind of make a more informed decision about which is the better iPad app for your editing needs. Let's start with the basics device requirements. I gotta say LumaFusion wins the day here because you need a newer iPad to operate Final Cut Pro for iPad, whereas LumaFusion has a lot more flexibility. So unless you have one of these newer iPads or you're in the market to buy a new iPad, you probably are gonna have to rely on LumaFusion until it's time to upgrade your device. Now let's talk about the other elephant in the room, which is price. LumaFusion is a one-time fee of $29.99 but if you do want the multicam editing feature, it is an additional cost of $19.99. If you don't know what multicam editing means, don't worry, we're gonna get into it. Final Cut Pro, on the other hand, is a subscription model, and I have a lot of thoughts about that. If you didn't see the review I did of Final Cut Pro for iPad on my other channel, I will link to it up here and down in the description box. But what you need to know is that Final Cut Pro for iPad is $4.99 a month or $49 for the year. If you do want that one-time cost, I gotta say, once again, LumaFusion is the winner. Let's now talk about media management because this is another big deal. There's a lot of similarities in media management on both of these apps. You can grab media from the cloud, you can pull it in from Dropbox, or you can pull media in from an external drive like this one. However, LumaFusion does have an edge because you can also edit from the external drive, meaning you don't have to import your media to live on your iPad if you're using LumaFusion on Final Cut Pro for iPad at this time, you have to import the media directly onto your iPad in order to edit. Now, it wasn't always this way. LumaFusion didn't introduce external editing until I think version three. So I'm pretty sure that Final Cut Pro for iPad will have this capability pretty soon at some point in the future. Um, but for now, that's a huge difference and it might be a deal breaker for you for the Final Cut Pro for iPad app. Another big difference is your timeline settings. In Final Cut Pro for iPad at this time, you can only have landscape or portrait orientations, whereas in LumaFusion, there are so many more options. Now let's talk about the difference between the user interfaces. I think for me, the biggest difference is that when you're editing in LumaFusion, for a lot of the functions in the app, you have to open up extra windows. You're not really locked into the home page like you are on Final Cut Pro. On the Final Cut Pro for iPad app, everything mostly is right here in this home page. There's a couple of instances where you might need to open separate windows. Whereas with LumaFusion, any function you wanna make pretty much, if you wanna resize your clips, if you wanna add effects, it's in a separate window. The other huge advantage that Final Cut Pro for iPad has is that it has this jog wheel and it really helps you navigate your timeline. That's something very unique to Final Cut Pro for iPad and I really, really like it. In my opinion, I prefer the UI on Final Cut Pro for iPad. Now let's talk about basic editing function. They pretty much work almost exactly the same. They both have this browser window where you can preview clips and mark your ins and outs. They both have a magnetic timeline. You can keyframe on both of them. You can expand the audio channels on your clips on both of these apps as well. But there is one thing missing from the Final Cut Pro for iPad app that LumaFusion does have, and I think it's important. You can make slip edits in LumaFusion and you can't in Final Cut. Let's look at the audio settings now in both of these apps. They both come with a fair amount of audio filters, but I do think Final Cut Pro for iPad has a big edge here because they have these additional tools like voice isolation, which removes the background noise when people are talking in your shots and it uses AI to do this. And that 
is an awesome feature that is available both on the Mac version and this iPad version. It also has this other loudness option, which boosts the levels in your clips if the audio is kind of low and this noise removal feature. These three tools in Final Cut Pro for iPad are just generally more practical, more useful than any of the audio filters in either of these apps, with the exception of LumaFusion's sound isolation filter, which does help reduce background noise. So when it comes to audio editing, I do think that Final Cut Pro for iPad has an edge. Now let's talk about multicam editing in Final Cut Pro for iPad and LumaFusion. If you don't know what multicam editing means, it just means that you have two cameras recording simultaneously. You bring them both into either of these apps and then the app will sync up the cameras so that you can cut between your angles and it feels seamless, almost like you're cutting together a sporting event or another live TV production. The process of creating multicam clips in each of these apps is a little bit different, but generally the outcome is the same. They both use sound from your clips to sync the angles. It's a really popular feature that is included in the subscription price in Final Cut Pro for iPad, but is the additional cost in LumaFusion. So maybe you like that model because if you don't need multicam editing, you don't have to pay for it. Now let's talk about a big one, color correction. Both of these apps have a general slider based color adjustments feature, and both of them have some color adjustment preset effects that you can apply to your clips. But LumaFusion also comes with a bunch of LUTs that you can apply to your media as well. Final Cut does not. Another advantage for me with color correction in LumaFusion is that you can have three scopes open at a time as you're color correcting your shots. And in Final Cut Pro for iPad, you can only have one. And to be honest with you, that drives me crazy. I love having all of my scopes open because I look at them for different things. So for me, that's a big deal. And that is a huge advantage in LumaFusion. Now let's talk about effects. Final Cut Pro and LumaFusion pretty much have the same effects, you know, distortion tools, chroma keying, masking, pixelation, blurs, drop shadows, things like that. LumaFusion does seem to have more of these effects, but are they really better? I don't know. I'm not really crazy about the effects in LumaFusion. One effect that does stand out on the Final Cut Pro for iPad app is this scene removal mask that crops the subject off the background of a shot. No green screen needed. So that's definitely a big highlight. In terms of transitions, again, I would say they're pretty interchangeable. In terms of title effects, Final Cut Pro definitely has the edge here. The titles in LumaFusion are static. And if you're working on a vertical video project like this one, a lot of these titles will get cropped off the screen. Whereas Final Cut has these really nice elevated title templates. So Final Cut Pro is definitely the winner on that front. Let's talk about extras. Final Cut Pro for iPad comes with all of these backgrounds as well as these animating objects, which are kind of fun. And it comes with these soundtracks, which automatically retime to the length of your video, which is awesome. LumaFusion, on the other hand, does have some free stock clips, stock music, and stock backgrounds supplied from Storyblocks, but there are very few of them. The free ones are the ones indicated in yellow. So you can see how few there are. If you want access to everything, you need to subscribe to Storyblocks. So it is kind of nice to have that integration, but it doesn't come for free. Just something worth mentioning. Next, let's talk about some other bells and whistles. This is where Final Cut Pro really outshines LumaFusion because it has some really great effects. Like for instance, live drawing, where you can doodle on your screen with your finger or your Apple Pencil, and that drawing will animate on over your video clips. LumaFusion doesn't even have anything close to that. It also has this auto crop feature where if you're using landscape video in a portrait timeline, Final Cut Pro for iPad will will track the subject in your shot and make sure it's centered in the frame no matter where your subject moves in the shot. Again, LumaFusion doesn't have anything close to that. And Final Cut has this feature where you can record media directly into the Final Cut Pro for iPad app through your iPad camera. And then this Pro camera has extra features aside from the standard camera app on your iPad, like these zebra lines to check your exposure. You can control your white balance and you can record in so many more file formats, including ProRes. And one last difference between Final Cut Pro for iPad and LumaFusion is the availability of third-party plugins. LumaFusion 
does not have a ton of effects in it as we discussed, but you can purchase plugins from third parties that will amp up your LumaFusion edit experience. You'll have more exciting titles and transitions and effects if you wanna spring for those additional elements. At this time, Final Cut Pro does not have third party plugin capabilities, but they did say that is coming soon. So you will be able to get more effects, transitions and titles for Final Cut Pro for iPad in the very near future, I think. So which one of these apps is better for you? It kind of depends what you're looking for. If you're really hung up on the one-time fee versus the subscription price, I think you might prefer LumaFusion. If you're really interested in being able to edit in different aspect ratios, I think you gotta go LumaFusion. If you have an older device and you're not looking to upgrade, I think you need to go LumaFusion. And if it's super important to you to edit on an external drive at this time, I do think you might prefer LumaFusion. However, if you want a better UI editing experience, I think you gotta go Final Cut Pro for iPad. If you're looking for some of those extra bells and whistles, like the auto crop feature, the live drawing, or the scene background removal, I do think you're gonna prefer Final Cut Pro for iPad. So I do think Final Cut Pro for iPad has the potential to blow LumaFusion away, but if you need these features we talked about right now, maybe you should stick with LumaFusion. I'm really interested to hear which app you guys like better. Let me know down in the comments. I love hearing from you. I read all your comments. If you want more content about the Final Cut Pro for iPad app, I have a whole other Final Cut Pro channel that I will link to down below so you can check out that content there. I picked out some other videos I know you're going to love and I'll see you again.